Hello everyone! I found this controller on AliExpress recently. It's called BSP D9. And it caught my attention because not only it is a cheap controller, but currently it is the only option with symmetrical analog sticks. This is the color I bought, and honestly, it looks horrible. Ooh. Brother, ooh. what's that? What's that, brother? It's nothing like what I ordered, and it's more like a neon red Joy-Con, which I hate, by the way. Here's a tiny manual, and there's these two support pads. Probably they should be installed in the centerpiece. Checking the ergonomics, they did a fantastic job here. The controller looks and feels exactly like a DualSense controller. The face button sinks flat with a shell on the edges, but the center is slightly elevated, which gives you a tactile feedback to the location of your thumbs related to the buttons. The face buttons are membrane buttons, and the shorter buttons have clicky switches. The buttons are easy to press at any point but depending where you press it, it can be a bit wobbly. It doesn't get stuck, but it can make these click noises. During regular use, it is pretty okay. The analog sticks has a plastic body and it has anti-friction rings. There is also a protective rubber pad on the edges of the controller. The triggers are regular Hall Effect triggers. And the D-pad is slightly different than a DualSense D-pad without the hole in the center. Opposed to the face buttons, the edges of this D-pad won't sink flat with the shell, but the center does. And this is actually a problem because if you see here, the shell has these four corners pointing towards the center. When you're playing a fighting game and you're doing consistently diagonal inputs, your thumb will be always rubbing on these corners. And after some time, your skin will be suffering from this repetitive motion. 
This is not much of a problem with a real dual sense because the center is higher than the shell. The back buttons are good, they're easy to press and won't get stuck. And on the top, you have this USB port, which can be used to charge the controller or use it with a wired connection. And this controller can stretch. It's almost as large as the GameSir G8 fully stretched. And when you stretch it, this is how big it gets. It stretches so much that you can do this. A switch section. It doesn't lock the console in place, but impressively, it has a pretty strong grip. It's also compatible with the smallest phone I have in hand, this old Galaxy S7. And it works with the Switch natively. Initially, the sticks will be poorly calibrated. It reaches maximum input before hitting the physical end of the stick. But after calibrating, it will be better. Also, the button layout is reversed. But if you hold cross and triangle and press the home button, it will reverse the buttons. Here's how it looks with just the centerpiece of the switch. And despite the problem with the center of this D-pad, the diagonals are pretty good and easy to hit. It cannot wake up the switch, so you have to manually turn it on. And impressively, it is also compatible with PS4 games. It works on the PS5, but you can only play PS4 games with it. And if that's not good enough, you can use it even on the PS3. Testing on computer, the analog sticks has no dead zones in the axis. And it has a perfect circularity. The back buttons can be registered to a single press. Or a macro. But notice that it doesn't register timing between button presses. So the macro here is pretty bad. It has turbo. And 150 Hz of polling rate. 
There is also a touch mapping mode for smartphones. And this controller uses this app called Shooting Plus. And honestly, this app is pretty good. It is very polished and it explains the functions very well. It even has videos teaching you how to use each function. And since the analog sticks are good and has no dead zones, this controller is a pretty good option to play touch-based games. Finally, let's check it internally. It has only 4 screws on the back on each side and it easily opens up. Here we have the back buttons on a separate board and the triggers have a metal pivot. But you can see that the pivot is sliding off here and if it slides off completely it could cause the button to malfunction, so you have to open it to fix it. Impressively, this controller has rumble motors. Here's the switches for the shutter buttons. And here's the spring mechanism. It seems pretty resistant too. Here's the membranes of the face buttons. And we have Hall Effect sticks. These are K-Silver modules. And finally, we have a 350 milliamps battery. It's not a big battery, but it should be enough for a few hours of gameplay. For my final thoughts, the BSP D9 is a mixed bag. It has nice things like the super wide stretch, a nice compatibility, 
being compatible with the PS3 and even PS4, the symmetric layout is also cool, and it even has Hall Effect sticks. But the D-pad is not comfortable, which hurts the fact that this is a D-pad dominant controller. The triggers and shutter buttons are poorly constructed, the macros are the worst I've ever seen, and it only connects to Bluetooth, which means it has more input lag. The price is very good though. If you're not picky with small quality issues like these, I can recommend the BSP D9. And that's it for this video. Leave your opinions in the comments. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.